Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the new podcast that examines iconic looks in film, television, music, and fashion history. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. My guest today is none other than Theo Kogan of The Luna Chicks. Yes, very exciting stuff. She has a new book. Well, The Luna Chicks have a new book called Fallopian Rhapsody, The Story of the Luna Chicks from Hatchet. And the author is the Lunatics and Jean Fury. And it is incredible. I luckily got to read it. I love it. You're going to love it. It is an incredible book. It's a totally innovative way of writing. And it's super collaborative and just an incredibly original book. My path to Theo is kind of funny. Uh, it, it's a classic New York story, of course. It begins with the acupuncturist, right? My acupuncturist, Billy Volano, who knew I was in the beauty industry, suggested that I meet his wife's sister, who had just launched a line of awesome products. Okay, fine. That's something we love, right? Meeting each other in person and supporting businesses, especially when they're good. So I set up a meeting with Theo, and on my way, I mentioned to my husband where I was going, and he completely freaked out. Theo? Theo Kogan of the Luna Chicks? Oh my god. Oh my god, how does Billy know Theo? Theo. And so there we go. My husband starts fangirling about Theo and frantically telling me how awesome she is and Googling her and pulling up pictures and showing me on YouTube all these videos. And so now I'm going to meet her and I'm totally nervous. <laughs> but if you know Theo, you know how unassuming and grounded and truly humble she is. So there's really no need to be nervous, but I didn't know that yet. We became fast friends and I'm a true fan of her creation, Armor Beauty which you might know, it was this amazing line of lip glosses. They actually remained on your lips and they were unintrusive at the same time and they were just simply gorgeous. Some were really loud colors and some were for even basic girls. And so they had this wild popularity and don't worry, I still have a stash. And Theo is, is really most famous for her Lunachix life, which is the badass punk group that will be touring again this year. And for this episode, we're celebrating the book, Fallopian Rhapsody, and it just released. It is really good. And I will have the links to the audio version and the regular version in the show notes. So make sure you check it out. Get the book, listen to the book, download the book, do whatever you do to read or listen to the book. <laughs> That's bottom line. I will have these links check it out and let me know what you think because I'd love to talk to people about it. I really couldn't recommend it more. Theo is also a mom and so for our interview in classic new normal just roll with it style her daughter Lucy crashed our interview which I was really stoked about because I really loved hearing Lucy's point of view about what it's like having a punk rock badass mom and I also loved hearing about her own projects. I mean let's just say it's a good idea to keep your eyes peeled for what Lucy has coming down the pike. In any any event, please enjoy our chat. And whether you're watching or listening to this episode, please make sure you check out the Luna Chicks new book and take advantage of seeing them in person this year because they have lots to celebrate and unleash. Enjoy. Patience, patience, patience. <laughs> So I'm here with Theo and I have been wanting to interview Theo I, since I started doing this and I've been like, oh my God, yes. And then I reached out maybe last fall and you said, I think there's a book, there, there'll be a book coming. And so let's start. And mm -hmm. I was like, no way. This is so <laughs> exciting. So you know what? I want to show you that I had to do a quick change into my Olivia Newton-John Dirt because I read oh. the book and I know what this does for you and I'm doing that in <laughs> honor of you because thank you Greece was transformative for me as well I also was not allowed to see it until a certain oh my age God. <laughs> so you understand <laughs> I get it completely and then <sighs> there was the time when you know all it was like on tv and on HBO like every night I remember and I was finally allowed to see it and my life changed. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> good for our formative years for sure. Yes, very. So I um I know a lot about your influences and uh your your uh 
musical and fashion influences. And I love that they're just all over the place. Yeah, truly. <laughs> truly. I mean, it's a complete hodgepodge because I've often wondered about how you put together your persona for Luna Chicks. And if you just want to like, tell us a little bit about since this is sort of look behind the look, um, I just wanted to know the process of you morphing into that character and when it started for you. And if it was even a character, I mean, was it just you? It was just it you. Was, I, th I think it was, but it, it, it definitely like, it, it was, it transformed as it went on. And it, it, I think that getting on stage brought me to a sort of zone and a place that I hadn't really felt before. And so that was one thing where it's like the energy just took over. So that was sort of the beginning with like a little bit of lipstick and eyeliner. And, um, and then as it went on, it was like a lot of it was also us entertaining ourselves. So it's like, you know, let's go get crazy thrift store stuff and, and just wear the craziest shit we can. And let's wear our bras over our dresses. And let's like put toilet paper coming off our shoes because it's so funny when people walk out of the bathroom that way, you know, a lot of it was like, hilarious and camp and <laughs> she thinks it's hilarious <laughs> and um and then as you know time went on it was sort of like it, it was also what's growing up because we were teenagers when we started and then I you know I met Miss Guy and I became you know entranced with drag and really learned how to hone my, I didn't know what, you know, um, a lot of things were and certainly not contour. I was like, what is this? Ooh, <laughs> this is a contour. Wow. Look what it can do. It's magic. Yes. Um, so yeah. And it became also like a way to pass the time before shows, which, you know, soundtrack into playing is like hours of boredom. Oh, right. Right. And, right. um, and it was a way to sort of, you know, paint and be creative. And, and, and it also turned into all of us, you know, like doing our makeup and then turning around and being like, ha you know, yes. <laughs> and like, the peanut gallery here. Um, and, you know, and it would, it would be like, you know, like squid would have one green eye, one pink guy, half a green lip, half a pink lip and like blacked out teeth. And I'd be like, ooh, you know, and then Gina would do something similar or matchy with her. And then, or sometimes like she would black out one tooth and I would black out all my teeth except for one. You know, it was like, we were so <laughs> just into doing whatever we wanted and not, not caring about, you know, yes, there was glamour and beauty clearly, but it was also very much about like, you know, taking the, you know, the piss out of it right say, right and taking you know and, and being like yeah this is we're deconstructing what you know as beautiful and um and also you know taking all the camp that we ingested from watching so many b movies and tv you know we all grew up on tv uh but uh my next guest is a little different not only is she uh on the runways ladies and gentlemen also the lead singer for the luna chicks uh they got a new album out called jerk of all trades just came out in the record store and uh that's it right there Everybody, please welcome Theo. Theo! Hi. 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 Please. Do you really? Okay. No, no one's ever crawled out like Yay, that. Yay! Look how nice it looks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Woo! That's lovely. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, can, I, can I get comfortable? Yes, please. No, get comfortable. I, I would look, I would stand in front of the mirror and look at myself and go, I am Pinky. You know, and I would like become her. That's so weird. I used to sit in front of the mirror, I am Potsy. Same thing. <laughs> very similar. Excellent. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one sec. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, Do you have like Tupperware? Like I need, I'm going to freeze this. Hey. Hey. Oh, I like your pink hair. Uh, I, I don't really like remote school, but I okay. also do. Okay. Yes. I know. 50-50. Right. I know. 
I had to put my son in a pod. Have you, do you guys have those yeah. pods? Yeah, I do. And do you ever go into the school? Ever? No. Yeah. No, he hasn't either. It's like, <laughs> it's a far off land. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. When did, when did Lucy discover who you were? That's a great question. I, I mean, mean, she knew. You, you really know, are she... still that, you know what I mean? But really like the, the stage part and. Yeah. Um, when did you discover where, when, who, you know, me as a lunatic? How long ago would you say? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I, as when I was like, my whole life, or oh. when I first, like, was a baby, there was armor. So I was always yes. around a lot of makeup. Yeah. Um, and. But in, in terms of the band. I, well, I met Sid. Yeah. Like, cause I was play. I used to play with Rio and Pepper. Like, sometimes. yeah, the kids. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, okay. So you all played together. So I saw them, and then I guess when I got a little older and could actually like actually understand and function, yeah. I guess. I, <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess he told me. I don't know. I mean, did you ever see pic- remember, pictures? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also. We, I was, I'm in the Lunatics documentary movie thing. So I knew that that was happening like on Halloween, like the year before last year, like they were just filming us. So oh yeah, they filmed. Like, okay, like, you know. Was like, that I so crazy? Really, was that yeah, so Yeah, it was really cool. I was yeah. a grandma for Halloween. Okay, okay that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> And so, and did you think it was cool when you saw like your mom in all of her glory and all of those crazy wigs with all that makeup? Did you think that was cool? Yeah, or was it like a little I scary? I really think it's cool. Like yeah. I, um, now I'm really into the punk culture and like crazy huh? stuff like mom. Oh, like I, like I, I wear like tutus on school and stuff. And so I, you really are resp- into- you're responsible Lucy for bringing it like, you know, you're going to, that's a heavy crown to, to wear. You're going to have to make yeah. your own band. Have you thought about making your own band? I actually do oh. have my own band, oh. um, except I'm kind of like, I don't have other people who's really in the band, but. It's a solo project. Yeah, it's nice. a solo project, but it's called Food Disorder. Um, I love that. Where did you come Instagram. up with it? You do? Um, and it, is it Food Disorder? I just came up with it. Yeah, it's food disorder. Is it like just food disorder? I don't know. I'll send it to you though. Yes, yes. for sure. And 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 it like is uh, it's you performing where? Yeah. In your room, all around. Well, d- my dad is he does like special effects and yes. he does movies and stuff. Yes. So we actually did some green screen and there are some videos. Oh There's God. one video where we just like decorate the bathtub and I'm just like sitting there. Like <laughs> we did a lot of weird things. Oh my God. I want to come over. I'm like, <laughs> can I be in the band? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. I love how generous you are. This is great. All right, give me. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Lucy. I can't believe it. I mean, I remember when you were telling me about your baby. I it's know. just amazing. <laughs> oh, so wait, so so we were talking about getting ready and how you guys discovered what you were going to do. I when I was reading the book, like I just, my heart was soaring. I didn't honestly expect to like it this much. It was because, oh, I was, wow. yes, I really am like, I am not good at reading. I'm just going to tell you I'm terrible at it. And I don't have something happen in COVID where I can't read. And I was so scared. Uh-huh. Like I asked Michael for the, for the advanced copy. And I was like, <gasps> Tiffany, good luck. You know, like, <laughs> and like, I couldn't put it down. It's, it reads so fast. It's, so, yeah. I feel like I'm right there with all of you guys. And it's just so positive and amazing. And the stories are fantastic. Of course. Aww. I mean, I feel like it's just a script for a movie. Hint, hint, Hollywood. 
come on, like options. <laughs> Thank thing. You. It's so great. And I just was struck by like how you guys came together because I only had like one friend like that, a sisterhood like that, like the combination of all of you coming together and having the interests in the same things like this and each having a role. Did you know how lucky you were? I think so. It just like was so natural and just so like just evolutionary that it, you know, it was almost like there were moments of like, oh my God, like, look at us. We're like in England touring, you know what I mean? Like where it would be like these, like, oh my God, reality check. And, and then it was just, you know, chugging along, but yeah, I mean, I mean, still it's like, I'm able to like, you know, talk to them about anything. And, um, and, you know, there are times when like nobody else will do, you know what I mean? It's like, you have to, you know, that they know you better than anybody and your whole life, you know? And, um, and I feel so grateful for that because I know that it's rare and, uh, my God, extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. And to like come full circle now after a year, you know, it wasn't always, there were times when, you know, we didn't talk to each other so much, you know, it's like, like relationships, it's like they ebb and flow. And there are times that we were very separate. And then, you know, to be able to like, to have that, like, you know, um, sort of dance that, that life does and then come back and be like closer than ever it's, and to do this project where it's like, it wasn't all easy. And it was, you know, there are, reading it for me, like there were, you know, things that made me laugh, things that made me cry, things that made me feel sick to my stomach, you know, like all these various things, which is of course what you want in a story. Um, and things that I had blocked out that Mm. various people remembered that I was like, Oh, you know, the collective memory of, and same for them where it was like, Oh no, this is what happened. And, um, yeah, I wish everybody could have that gift of like, sort of, what happened? You know yeah. what I mean? Cause you just are yeah. carrying around this narrative that you stick to. And wh- what were some of the surprises that you found? Um, I didn't remember when, um, I don't want to give too much away. Oh, of course, of course. But there were, yeah, there were things yeah. that I completely blocked out. And now that they've been brought back, I am like, Oh yeah, I totally remember that. But, um, and are you finding that you're dealing with this information through a different lens? Are definitely, you? Yeah. Definitely. And then I think it, for, for a while it was too close and too painful in some ways, you know, to think about it. Um, and then, yeah, very different lens for sure. Of course. Of course. I like um, jotted down some of the things that really stood out to me and then, and some of them were that, that New, New York, New York city, a lot of, people who listen and watch this are like, um, you know, the ki- I call them the kids, you know what I mean? <laughs> who, who know a very different New York than the one yeah. that you have. And I had uh, Diane Brill on and people were DMing me like, oh my God, more stories about New York at this time, you know, mm. Dan Sateria and you being at a party with Madonna happening to be there. And weren't you saying she was like dancing in the mirror with herself? <laughs> At aerobics, yeah, <laughs> the whole visual an aerobics so- class. <laughs> I'm so mad. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a club. No, it was aerobics, and she was so good at everything, and so perfect, and so like in love with herself. It was like just like mad. So people were mad at you, Theo, yeah. for being so perfect. I mean, <laughs> you are, you are honestly, the whole image is just angelic. And it's so oh. funny that juxtaposition of you when, when I, I didn't grow up with the lunatics, Jace did, but um, because he was born and raised in New York, mm-hmm. when I met you in arm armor era, you know, I was just stunned by your beauty and glamour and your girl boss, you know, uh, for those who don't know, you know, Theo had her own line um, called Armor Beauty. It was incredible quality um, lip glosses. So good. I still hoard them. <laughs> I have a stash that no one needs to know about. <laughs> and they're the perfect thing. And, you know, you were just an entrepreneur and, and you know, really just owned everything that you were doing and how is it different? Really? You were hustling in both worlds. One is a complete badass punk rock star. And then as a cleaned up 
badass executive, you know, and how, did you find that one career lended itself to the other at all? I definitely, yeah. I mean, I had always wanted to have a company. It was, you know, and my life has just been so, you know, DIY everything. Yeah. yeah. So each thing that I've done is like, you know, it was like, well, I did this. Why can't I do that? You know, it's sort of like, you can't, I'm, I'm not going to say no to myself if I decided something that feels right to do. And my gut is like, let's go for this, you know, then it's like, I'm happy to, to jump sort of into the, into the air, into the void and, and figure it out. Cause you said that's easy. <laughs> no, uh, there's no net obviously, but for that parachuting, but you said that I think armor came to you like a vision. Yeah. Like, and, and uh, sort of answered it. And is that how the book came? How did the book come to fruition? So the book, like, me and Jean Fury, who wrote it with us, started working on a book, like a memoir that oh. for me, that um, before I had Lucy, so it was like 11 or 12 years ago. Oh my God, Theo, I love and, that. Yeah. And then I had her and then I you know, talk about not being able to read. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I, could, I was like, you know, and I had armor. So I had that baby with my baby and I could not function. Yeah. So nothing happened for a while. And then I kept thinking about it and I was like, I think that we should do this as a band book. And I think I, I was like, I was ready. I wanted to bring them in. I thought like, this is a good time to do this. This is like pre-Trump. Uh -huh. and, um, uh -huh. and so we started working on it together and um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And it was, I mean, Jean is just incredible and incredible. You know, yeah, she killed it and she worked so hard. She had to transcribe like so much time of us <laughs> yapping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. But she picked like, it seems like, it seems like all of your yapping, as you call it, <laughs> is like completely concentrated into, I mean, I don't know. The concentration of like amazing stories, just one after another is just like, I, I feel like you guys talk like that all the time. And I know that's not true. <laughs> I know there was like a lot of like, you know, talk about parenting and stuff in there that was probably like. Talking about food, there was so much eating. Uh, like we would meet and like have like, we would just eat and eat and eat while we talked. It was really fun. Like we would go to Jean's house and she would have to spread snack on it. It was very sweet. Um, but there are so many stories that didn't make it in. That, of course. You know, are equally as hilarious and crazy and, you know, like. <laughs> oh my God. It was I'm hard sure. to chop, chop, chop. Oh, as I you mean, know, as a director and yeah. Oh my God. Editing is literally, it's like a murderous activity. It is violent and terrible. And I, I. I yeah. <laughs> I want, I was really struck by. I always your take on feminism because I just love that you are a fighter but it I'm, I'm just gonna be blunt like you're beautiful you know what I mean you're <laughs> beautiful and glamorous and you know that's one thing and then you're also this ultimate badass and I put together in the book, I pieced together a lot of how you came to be that way. And one thing that you said, I just couldn't shake was when you said um, that you felt invincible as a teen, but you never really felt 100% safe, you know, and how does that affect your parenting? And, you know, I know how your mom was, right? She was like, you can't do this. You can't do that because she right. too was sort of like you, Very right? Uh -huh. Yes. And so how does that affect you as a parent of a beautiful young girl in the streets of New York? Very different New York, but yes. still, you know? Well, one of the first things I taught her when she was probably a toddler was like, you know, if anybody puts their hands on you, like kick them in the nuts. Okay. <laughs> that was my first lesson. <laughs> and scream as loud as you can. She has a very powerful set of fights, that kid. Um, and then, you know, now that she's, you know, she's tweening big time Man. and um, she's really into fashion and she's into makeup. I mean, she had makeup on now that you, it's, you know, her natural look, but she, she'll do like a lot. Here we go. And, um, and she likes, you know, she's gotten back into shit for a long time. She wouldn't wear like skirts and dresses. And now she's like really into all of that. And 
So I'm just like very honest in a different way of like you you have to be safe first. Like that's number one. So, you know, don't go out looking too extreme without somebody with you, especially mm. as a 10 year old. Um, and, you know, it's like, it's all safety first. And I explain why, you know, like when I was younger and I wore crazy stuff, like people used to chase me, people threw stuff at me, people harassed me. Like, I don't want that for you. I want you to be safe. Number one. But I feel that you, you got through all that without being like, it's sim- sometimes it's just cut down to men are bad and women are awesome and m- men are always thinking the worst. I feel like you're, you're not of that school of thought, you know, it's like, it's just be prepared for bad things to happen yeah. sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you truly were a fighter. And I feel like you got through so much. You were so violated at such an early age, just in <laughs> passing. And, and that sort of, I guess was the DNA for you and made you into the, you said that you were the first to sign up for just screaming on stage. And that was like the ultimate release, you know what I mean? And I think that that was having an outlet like that was probably the best solution. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, it was like, it was sort of a no brainer. And I did have that moment of like drums, so many things, you know, which I did end up learning to play the drums and I love the drums. Um, but, uh, yeah, clearly I needed to, to let it all out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then how did you face the sexism that you guys, um, respond, you know, faced during your tours and things as a group or did anybody have a different viewpoint or did, were you sort of a unified front? I think it was, we were all, you know, we clearly all were not having it. And, um, you know, there were times when, things happen and, you know, with certain people would get upset because they weren't prepared mentally for somebody Mm -hmm. to jump down into the crowd and start pounding on someone. And, you know, I don't think people expected that of us, which is why, you know, people would scream crazy stuff at us. And um, it was hard. And it turned in some ways, it turned into like this, this fight for us of just like, it was like, we are gonna, in some ways, it felt like we were like these, like, punk soldiers <clears throat> toward the end we like one of our love that. last like unified stage look was like these amazing um camouflage outfits that our friend mandy black made for us and we that tour it was i think it was a warp tour probably 2000 we had um dog tags made that said like lunatics at war with the world like it felt very like we're gonna do this it's us against everything and there was so much sexism and so much still going on constantly um that it was like we're it was like it was a mission I would say to just in some ways just to prove okay you're all fucking wrong and you're not going to get away with it and we're here to prove that I guess in a way um but yeah it was hard and it was exhausting and you know and um and there was something about, you know, whether it was the character or just feeling that sense of invincibility on stage, which, you know, isn't really real, but it feels that way, to not take it and to, um, you know, it was just a place to not put up with it, especially ha- having gone through so much out in the world here and everywhere, you know, and um, to be on stage and then have someone you know, the scream sexist stuff at you. It's just, it's too much, you know? And then we were like, we're not taking that shit. How old were so. you about when, when you were experiencing that? Um, I mean, I, it's funny because in the very beginning, when we like, I don't started, remember, I don't remember yeah. how old I was. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These questions are hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I would say like, it was like in our twenties when that, you know, we were on bigger tours, we were playing with these, you know, bands of guys oh. that were, you know, getting radio play. And so it was like a, a very like, you know, white male jock sort of milieu going on. And so, yeah, that, okay. Yeah, I get it. You know, but it was also, I feel like in a way we were there to like school these kids to be like, you can't do that. <laughs> you yeah. <know? laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, yeah. And um, 
Yeah, it, sometimes it just felt like we were getting up there. It was like being in a boxing match, you know, via the stage, you know, not in terms of like hitting people, but in terms of like a fight, you know. Did that thrill you or was it exhausting? Like, did you both. ever just want to play? Right. Yeah, both. I mean, playing was usually the best part of the day um, because you're basically waiting all day to do that, you know, and on <laughs> like you're either driving or you're sleeping or you're, you know, walking around or whatever you're doing. You're just like, it's all for that 45 minutes or an hour, 30 minutes on stage. Yeah. So um, usually even like when I was at my sickest, cause I would get so sick sometimes and I would just somehow rally and perform, you know, and um, that's wild. Wow. Wow. How come we can't do that today? I, <laughs> I cannot do no. it. It's no. done. It's over. It's done. It's done. I, mean, I think I'm hearing a rustling. Are you, uh, do you have Oh, papers? sorry. I was no, that's okay. <laughs> nervously. You, you need a, um, a fidget spinner, right? I do. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are I, they still a thing they are huh listen i have like 900 million dollars worth of them in a drawer and i'm so pissed about it I went, i'm like can i make an art project with them i yeah um, <laughs> um one thing i wanted to ask you was how did it feel when this is gone how did this how did this life that you were living did you think it would go forever and when you're sitting there doing makeup on someone, don't you just want to scream in their face? I was a rock star. Like, <laughs> I feel like, like sometimes there are times when I'm like, there were, there was one specific time during like a fashion show that I was backstage, you know, okay, let's get everybody powdered for the umpteenth time. And some nervous person in production pushed me. Oh my God. I've been pushed aside. And I was just like, I have to get out of here right now before I deck this person because then my street and my rock star came out and I was like, get me the fuck out of here right now. Did you get the job? Did you? I had to, I just walked out of the backstage. I didn't leave, but I just walked out because I was like, I don't, I'm going to, no, you don't, there's no reason to do that. That has happened to me as well. I know. I know that feeling. I know. And so, so was it a hard, not costume, but identity to, to, I don't think you ever really shed it. Did you, did you feel like you no, shed it or did it morph? I didn't. It morphed. And I feel like it, in a way I was like, it was almost like I went from, you know, it was like being one creature to another creature. Like, I feel like I was mm. like, Mm -hmm. There was like, again, like this sort of evolution of shape shifting, and in some ways, shape shifting. And in some ways it's like um, developmental in a way, because there are times that I'm working with, and this isn't recently, but like in the, in the years that I've been doing makeup, which is not like 12 years, which is, you know, I know it's not a lot for some, but it feels like a lot. And, um, and uh, it's, I went from like, being so like I have to be in front of the camera to like now I'm like like the wings close and uh -huh. I was like I'm a caterpillar again you yeah. know and um and then being a mom too it's like there's there were so many things that I was just like who am I who right am I now? yeah who am I now like I'm um am I still a rock star if I'm not doing that was that it, it, I started to separate it into like these different lives right. like that Do was I the have old to be me do I have to be doing it in order to be right. it? Interesting. And, and then I'm like, I, yeah, it's still there and it's part of me and it's who I am. And, you know, but I don't see myself that way on a daily basis. So there are times, you know, even recently, like I'm, I'm on a new job with a new company and they're like, we totally all fangirled about you, you know? And I'm <laughs> like, oh God, because I feel like I'm like, Waka waka waka, here I am, the makeup artist. Like nobody knows who I am, you know. <laughs> and then often they do, or you know, somebody on set, like sometimes it's like a lighting guy, or you know, it's like somebody yeah. like, you, you're my favorite band, or you know, and I'm like, wow, this is you know, I just I'm just me living life. So sometimes I just, I just don't even think that anybody knows anything. 
Well, that's why it works. You know, I feel like you're one of the healthiest people that I know. And like to, to pull the, the curtain back and see the life you live. I'm like, how did she become normal? This is (laughs) a lot of therapy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Lots of Pandora's box. Like, I mean, when I see you crawling on stage and just like, I can't even see that in you. And I just, I, you know, like talking to you right now. And that's what I love about you so much. It's just (laughs) secret, secret (laughs) tunnels. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So tell me a little bit about some of your looks, like, tell me a little bit about like, I want to know details, like how many rows of lashes did you put on your face? So (laughs) the first, my first like top and bottom set was made by Miss Guy, who, um, I think probably nine pair or something made those lashes. And he's, he's allegedly making me a new pair for the shows coming up, which I'm so excited about, but he taught me how to do it. So, you know, then I would make my own, I wore those to death and they oh, just rewore them. You wore, re-wore. I wore them over and over and over and they would get wet and then they'd be like flat and I'd be like, yeah. stick them back in the case. And the next day I'd sort of play with them. But after a while they were literally like these limp, you know, like fringe, floppy disc (laughs) Um, but uh it was so fun to have them and it it really like as the as my looks on stage sort of you know honed further it was just like becoming this crazy doll like a live doll you know that was sort of the the look um what was oh I love this too that you said that your parents unwittingly brought me up to be an outsider. I love that. Do you feel like you're doing the same thing? Being an outsider is cool. I mean, I guess so, but not in also like sort of in just a, a way that we are who we are. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you never know what your kid's going to be like, because there are some kids that, you know, become like Republicans that are born to very liberal people. And, you know, me and Sean, um, my husband are both like, we're both rock stars, you know, we're both from that world and we are who we are and we walk around this way. And, you know, so for her, I think she's going to feel comfortable no matter what, but I think already she's like, when she gets all dolled up and it goes outside and it's like, I like when people look at me. (gasps) Great. You know, like (laughs) that's something that, that just keeps heart like coming up for me. Cause I, you know, like we were said, we were talking, um, working with Dita and like, she's this, the same idea of like, of setting, you're setting boundaries, right? It's complicated. You're setting boundaries, but you're also inviting people to look. Right. And that's the hard part. That's the hard part, right? Being okay with looking and inviting people to look. Yes. I invited them to look at me, you know, and yes, I I like this. Mm -hmm. And then being like, but no, don't even think about going too far, you know, that's the balance. That's such a struggle. And I don't know if it's on us or them or everybody to sort of get it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's complicated. Yes. (laughs) And uncomplicated. It's like, look, don't touch period. You know, like (laughs) that's so true. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? uh, Yeah. It's complicated to put into motion, I guess is the, yeah. Yeah. Not complicated to understand, but difficult to Um, practice. So what's next? You're, you're, I heartbreakingly watched as the show kept getting postponed and then canceled because of the COVID, the reunion. And that must've been brutal to go through. Just Yeah. I mean, it was like March and things were beginning to shut down and things were beginning to get canceled. And I was just like, that's not going to happen to our shows. That can't happen to our shows. And then boom, it happened. And that weekend was like the highest viral rate in the city also on top of it. It was like, it couldn't have been a worse weekend. And um, yeah, it was heartbreaking. We'd been rehearsing for six months. You know, I was, we were all getting ready. Yes. We, you know, we hadn't played in so long that we were like, we need time, you know, to get this. It had been like 16 years since we had even been playing together. So yeah, we were really uh, have costume almost done, like all this stuff. Yeah, and um, costume is so cool. 
Are they? Yeah. So I'll give a shout out to um, my dear friend and forever costume creator, um, David Dalrymple, who used to, and maybe he still makes all Patricia Fields. Like I used to walk in all the shows for him and her back in the day. And he made me so many amazing looks. And so I went right to him. And so we've been working on something and he, he makes so much stuff for so many like RuPaul's drag race people. And I'm you know, so Rockets excited. And, yeah. Wait. He's incredible. So this, this costume was made one for each of you guys or this right now he's made for all of us in the past right now it's just mine but i i keep telling everybody to call him so we'll see what happens <laughs> and and is he making another one is, you'll have yeah one. we're gonna make it we're gonna make another one too so <gasps> we have more than one yeah yeah Wait, this i think is I, I wanted amazing. to do that but you rescheduled <laughs> you rescheduled the show right yeah so the shows are rescheduled to thanksgiving weekend november Right. Um, okay. At Webster Hall. And, <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So they were, at, they were at Webster Hall to begin with and they're, they're there and tickets are basically from the first, how many times has it been rescheduled? Tickets are valid if you bought them <laughs> for the same nights. Um, and, and then we're doing punk rock bowling in Las Vegas in September, which was also rescheduled more than once. So, which was supposed to be after the New York shows last year. So this time we're doing that first and then our New York shows. So oh. and we're playing with Devo. Devo is playing after us. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of like, we're like, oh my God. In Vegas? So yeah okay and the english beat is playing that day September? and it's a three-day festival yeah look at me so i'm fun. like can like, i hmm. go yeah i'm like <laughs> yeah. September, what am i doing nothing <laughs> <laughs> the only thing i'm doing in september is they're just like how your tickets are being honored my new order pet shop boys tickets are being honored in september that's the only oh. thing in my calendar that i might like, so i want to like walk out the whole week <laughs> That's going to be amazing. I am so excited for people to experience your book. I'm so happy for you and impressed. You. And just, I think it's so good and infectious and just a delicious, delicious book. And I know people are going to read it. And I'm excited because it, you have it on audio as well. Right? Yes, are we you did guys the audio book. You, yeah, you we did it. it? Yeah. Okay. okay that's and that was like the first time that, that me and Gina and Squid were in the same room together in over a year was we all got vaccinated. We got tested. We were like in there together because we knew that it would be a better performance if we were all yes. in the same room. And, um, and it was so great and <gasps> amazing. Oh, so this yeah, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is great. So, okay, yeah. so that's on Audible and all that. So I can just, that'll be on everything. Yeah, I can just use my credit. Yeah, <laughs> right exactly. now I'm doing Andrew McCarthy's um, book, and so you know, oh. um, which I highly recommend. It's, it's, a good yeah. one. it's a good one. Oh wow! Um, yes, so I will put it in the. I'm sure you can pre pre order it and all that. And then you have an event coming up on um the first right the day of the, the first launch. which is our release date yeah yes. so exciting. June our house arena i rsvp'd for it you can you can um you can pre-order the book right now yeah. yeah okay great and i'll put the link in the in the um description and all that awesome. kind of, stuff, of course and i'm <laughs> i'm so excited for people to listen read experience <laughs> however they digest books and <laughs> looking forward to the shows that are coming oh, amazing thanks Thank for talking so to me Tiffany. theo <laughs> of course <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our episode, you guys. Thank you so much, as always, for listening, sharing, following, all the stuff. Make sure you check out the book and tell me what you think. Fallopian Rhapsody, Luna Chicks' new book from Hatchet, and all the links are in the show notes. Check it out. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok, edited by Nicole Tucker. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening. 
to look behind the look.